Well, I think it was. It certainly wasn't it, written that way. And as uh, one senior Indian official put it, it's not anti-China, but it's about China. So if you look at what they did look at, which was COVID-19 um, and other issues, you know, clearly China it kind of looms over all of it. And that's the reason why um, they're getting together in the first place and trying to shore up that alliance. But I think they were very careful, especially several of the Quad member countries, very careful to make sure it didn't look very overtly that they were coming out against China specifically. And in fact, we don't expect China's reaction to be too strong from the Quad itself. In fact, because there really wasn't anything that came out of it that was a surprise in terms of relations directly with China. OK, what about the talks with Japan and Korea? Will the priority there perhaps be more pointed towards China or more obvious? Yeah, well, we won't know, of course, what, what's, you know, what's being discussed privately. But I think, you know, what I take from the um, from the Quad Summit and from the um, the overall uh, diplomacy that's happening now with the U.S. administration out in Asia is, you know, number one, clearly the Biden administration is making very clear that the Indo-Pacific, Asia and China specifically are top priorities. This is the first summit. You know, these are senior level meetings. You know, we're only just 50 days or so into this new administration. So Asia's the priority. I think uh, in addition to shoring up alliances to potentially counter China, there are some specific bilater bilateral issues as well to deal with, which are, you know, the prior administration in the US was very transactional, was talking about reducing troops out in the Asia region. Expect to see the very different uh, discussions happening now with Japan and South Korea. It's a tough one, isn't it, Angela? Because when we talk about those potential red lines, I mean, Antony Blinken has essentially said that this is the great test for America in the 21st century, this relationship with China. But the red lines themselves, I mean, already you're seeing um, a real leveling of the playing field, right? Whether it because as of the economy, the fact that China has kind of come out of this uh, COVID pandemic much stronger than its rivals, whether you know, the fact that they've equaled out in so many ways in terms of military spending with the United States. What are some of those red lines that are actually achievable, do you think, in the short term? From the U.S. administration side? Yes. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that, you know, the reality is this. The U.S. is still the global economic and military power, but China's number two and it's getting closer. And I think, you know, we know that. I think the interesting thing that the, we need to watch for is to what extent can the Biden administration get these allies together and approach things in a multilateral basis. Because if you do have these alliances, you can get, obviously you can get further uh, on a variety of things. I mean, just look at the soft power diplomacy potentially with the vaccine rollout with the, with the quad. So, you know, it's, it's hard to say if there would be any specific red lines because, you know, I think clearly the U.S. and probably China don't want anything to escalate militarily. But there's a lot of, you know, really, um, high tensions of how they're going to deal with each other going forward. And I think, um, you know, China, the big question in all this is what is China going to do? You know, China has now dealt with four years of a U.S. administration that was unpredictable, but you can kind of piece together what that would look like here. You know, what are they, you know, what are they going to do when we have a U.S. administration that is kind of competently and carefully putting together an alliance to counter China in some of these ways? And I think what we've seen is that China is, um, feeling that they are being encircled by the U.S. and that feeling is real and growing. And so they're going to push back with their own investments in tech spending and their own focus on the domestic economy. And um, it's going to be interesting to see then what comes out of the Alaska meetings uh, between the U.S. and China officials as well.